All right, what I got going on here is I just finished up this um, custom HDLRC KT20 kind of using parts that I had around. This is the configuration I tend to fly the most. It's going to be uh, the stock unit with some Yvonne props and the Insta360 Go 2 with my soft mount. But then I got a whole series of battery types. And so I, what I wanted to do is do a test, flying each battery twice, get the average duration of flight, basically from a fully charged status down to 3.5 volts per cell. So I've got two different 2S packs here, one at 450, one at 650. I got four of the 3S packs. 450, 650, and 850 from Tattoo, and then an 850 from Race Day Quads. The big thing on this one here is a 60C compared to some of these others, which were 75s. Then I have some 4S packs, again, 450, 650, and 850. And so I ran that test. Let's go look at the results. It's kind of interesting. All right, what I got on the screen here is a list of the batteries that I tested, all with these Avon Blur props on that KT20 little quad there. Who the maker of the battery pack is, and then how many seconds that I was able to fly before I got down to the three and a half volts per cell on each of the packs, and so, I did sort this chart based on the number of seconds from this, the least amount of time, which is, <clears throat> this would be a minute 40 seconds, all the way up to 5 minutes and 20 seconds. And so, I think obviously when I'm going to be using this for filming, I'm going to be using the ones that have the, the most duration. Uh, the other thing I captured is what stick position I had the throttle in to maintain a hover. And if you see the 2S packs were in that 85% range, the 3S packs were right around 60%, and the 4S packs was at uh, 30 to 40%. I also captured the weight of just the battery itself, and so this is going to help us determine which battery uh, performance efficiency is compared to the time. Here's the total weight of the quad with that matching battery. And then the main parameter that I was measuring or calculating was how many seconds I'd got per gram of battery weight. And then so let's this is where we start to look at which battery is the best fit for this particular quad with that set of props. Now the first observation is just going down here on the 2S packs you can see we've got 200 more milliamp hours going between these two packs but the weight was only two grams more to get that extra 200 milliamps or 200 milliamp hours and I bought me 50 more seconds so there's you got quite a bit of an improvement uh, just by using that 650 pack versus the tattoo on the 2S, uh, giving you time there. Oh, that's two minutes and uh, 30 seconds. Moving down to the next line here, <clears throat> this tattoo, a 3S 450, it's it's 12 grams more than the 2S. So it's, here's the 2S tattoo. Here's the 3S tattoo. 12 grams more, but added almost one minute of time. So I've got 100 seconds versus 156. So that's a pretty good addition uh, comparing the 2S to the 3S of the Tattoo 450s. <coughs> Moving on to the 4S 650, if you look, look, the 4S is a little bit more than twice the weight of the 2S650, but it only got 70 more seconds 
the 150 to the 220. So for that extra doubling of the weight, I didn't get doubling of the time. So that's one of the reasons that this is reading kind of a low number of seconds per battery gram. That particular arrangement is not a good fit. The next measurement here is with the 3S650. Now what's interesting here is it's less weight than the 4S650. You can see it's 54 versus 68, but it's actually more time. So there's a good efficient fit. 3S650 versus a 4S650 from the same manufacturer. And this is something you, you it's kind of surprising, but it does show that the, the total weight being 178 versus 192 probably allowed the props to operate a little bit more efficiently, and therefore giving me more more total time with that pack. The next one is using the 4S850 from RDQ. Uh, slightly more time than the 650s. The battery weight again is similar to the 4S650. And I gained 25 seconds with just with 200 mil more milliamp hour on it. You'd expect to get much more out of that for 200 milliamp hours added, but you don't. So this is probably the least efficient uh, combination. This particular pack, which are brand new, I just bought these, and uh, it's just not a very good fit efficiency-wise compared to some of these others. Moving on, we're looking at the 4S450, which, again, is not a very... A lot of milliamp hours, so you wouldn't really expect it to run very long. But look at this, it ran more duration than all these above it, and its weight is pretty low. It's down in this 50, mid 50s range, much lower than this 450, you know, 650 up here. <clears throat> and so it also is again down in the lower end of the weight range, and I got more time than the 4S 850 just above it. Now the most efficient one is, was this 3S 850 from RDQ. Gave 270 seconds of time. The battery weight was only 52 and given the total weight at 176 giving us the best number of seconds per battery gram and almost, uh, well it's four and a half basically four and a half minutes of flight time. And the last one I tested was this 3S850 tattoo. Gave us the longest duration. Over five minutes, five minutes, 20 seconds. Uh, but it wasn't necessarily uh, the most efficient. But it does, you know, has that weight back up there. So it's operating kind of on the higher end of its range. But it did give me a little more than five minutes of flight time. And therefore, if that's what I'm looking for for the filming, I would probably go with this 3S850 over all the other ones. So, I thought this was interesting results. Perhaps you did too. Let me know what your thoughts are. Thanks for watching.